Dobro. Sada ćemo, dakle, imamo još jednog predavača, bit će sve dve teme, bit će malo skraćene, dakle, zbog vašeg strpljenja. Dakle, ponovno ćemo čuti gospodina Prebena, Kristijansena, on je pčelar i savjetodavac za zdravlje pčela. Dakle, bit će dva predavanja. Prvo predavanje, bit će o... Molim za pažnju, molim vas. Molim za pažnju. Dakle, sljedeće od dve teme o kojoj će govoriti gospodin Preben, bit će, dakle, prva tema je suzbijenje bolesti pčela u Švedskoj sa osvrtom na nozemozu i američku kubu. Pa ćete nakon toga čuti tehniku pčelarenja u Skandinaviji. Dakle, imat ćete dva predavanja od strane isto predavača. Ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce Mr. once again, Mr. Preben Christiansen, and uh, he will explain two, two terms, two presentation, and the floor is yours. You, you keep translating uh, for you. We, we, we get a break, but you don't. Uh, yes, I, I, I think I'd like to... Uh, Say, to fill in what Norman said, I think it's really important this integrated pest management uh, philosophy. Treat when it's necessary, but not don't treat when it's not necessary. One thing I would like to say about the, the, this uh, article about sublimation, I think it's a little, uh, not completely correct to say sublimation, it's sublimation with the barrocks. Because we know from test studies that have been done in other places with other, uh, you know, equipment for, for sublimation that you can get good results and you can get very bad results. So this study was done on sublimation with barracks. Barracks. Okay. We, did, we did also, uh, many, many years ago in Sweden, which I didn't have time to show, but it's in here, uh, with Varrocks, and we didn't get as good as we saw. We got good results, but not as good results. I don't know why. Maybe we so we so so to je tač određeni preparat bio koji je testiran u tom radu, što je rezultate prikazao prethodni govornik, i to je trebalo da sačeka gospodin koji se nešto punio. Uh, znači, tačno određeni, a ne ono što je on konkretno taj gospodin Marković, kako se zove, koristio. Da, da, treba da sačeka. Evo, ljudi su čak razumeli bez prevođenja da se o nešto budi i da govori o mnogo duže vremenu koje je potrebno. A priča se sad nastavlja na ovaj, sa fokusom na integrisani management generalno svih problema u pčelarstvu, a sve se vrti oko toga da ne treba tretirati ako nije potrebno so that we can continue in this manner. Okay, what I'll talk about now is bee disease control in Sweden, and it's basically two diseases, American farm brood and Nozema. What do you do with the American brood and Nozema? How do you fight against that in Sweden? Just to give an overview of what the, the, can I say, the authorities role in the bee disease control. We had the Swedish Board of Agriculture, this is a national board, it's a national uh, government agency that is actually uh, leading the, the work on bee disease control on the diseases that we have legislations around. Deluje i određena grupa koja se bavi bolestima pčela, a imaju i po regionima koliko sam shvatila. And we have three, well we have one disease and two parasites that are regulated in the legislation in Sweden. It's American fowl root and then varomite and trachomite. Imaju, so two parasites, not three, two parasites. Only two parasites, that's very old. Yes, two parasites, which are, let's say, in veterinary program, measured, regulated, or at least regulated, what's going on. And so far, we haven't found the tracheal mites, so we only have 
Ali pošto nema ovog drugog krpelja, to je relapsa, u principu sve se svodi na američku trulež i na varovu. Sweden is divided in 21 counties, and you see the borders of the map here. And in each county there are a number of bee inspectors. We have around 500 uh, 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 bee inspectors in Sweden. Švedska podelja na 21 okrug i po njima su raspoređeni inspektori, oko 500 inspektora za pčele. So here is one county, that's actually the county where I have my beekeeping. And the red lines show the borders for the bee inspectors. So in each area there is a bee inspector. And the smaller, thinner line shows the parishes. It's, I don't know how you call it in, in uh, a parish. A u okviru svakog ovog crvenog pod regiona, pod okruga, postoje opet neki manji okruzi za koje mi nemamo termin, nisu opštine, ne znam kako. And if it's an area where you suspect that American firewood can be present, then I need to have my bees inspected before I can move from one parish to another. Da, isto kao što je kod nas potrebno da imate, da pčevarski inspektor pregleda pčeva ako hoćete da ih premeštate iz jednog u drugi okrug. The, most of the southern part of Sweden is designated as an area where you can suspect Aha. American farmers. I don't know how much American farmers we have here in Serbia. I can show you some statistics on Sweden uh, a little later. Uh, but some of you may be familiar with the American farm route. You have this typical ropiness from the larvae when it's deceased. Ne znam koliko ste srodni sa ovom bolešću, koliko se javi u Srbiji, on će pokazati statistiku za njegovu zemlju, ali čisto znate kako se prepoznaje preko ropine s testa. It's a very infectious disease, and especially because Especially because you are, it's, it's, it's a spore forming bacteria that causes the disease and these spores, they are very, very long lived. They can live for tens and tens of years. Znate da je veoma zarazna bolest, da izaziva bakterija koja formira spore, a spore su izuzetno otporne, užasno puno godina zadržavaju viabilnost, odnosno efektivnost. It doesn't show so well in the picture, but this is a microscopic picture of the spores, and the picture below is the microscopic picture of the bacteria in its vegetative stage. And then to the right, you see the how how it works with the the bacteria. Cycles. Yeah, you can probably explain that. Cycles. The corny leva slika prikazuje spore pod mikroskopom. Donja slika levo. Pokazuje vegetativne stadijume u vidu bakterijskih štapića, a ovo crno-bela je slika, šema razvoja, odnosno ciklusa. And here is an old drawing by White. It's actually the researcher who identified the bacteria. So you see here, it looks like a healthy larvae, but if that larvae had got the spores when it was very young, it will start to disintegrate and finally end up like, like a scale. And when the larvae are very, very young, uh, only 10, 20 spores are enough to, to make it diseased. Ove su originalne slike od White-a koji je prvi opisao bolest i kaže da je ako na radnom stupnju se zarazi larva, dovoljno je dvadesetak spora da ugine 
ove nekih šest onih faza kroz koje prolazi lava. I know when I talk to Swedish beekeepers about the American fowl brood, you know there's a disease called European fowl brood, the, the, some Swedish beekeepers think, hmm, that's something that came from America. No. No, and you, but that's not the case. The only reason why it's called American fowl brood is that it was an American researcher who found it. And almost at the same, or around the same period, there was a, a European uh, group that identified the bacteria that causes what we call European fungus. <laughs> Everything comes from Europe. Naziv je evropska i američka, nemaju veze sa poreklom bolesti, nego imaju veze sa poreklom istraživača koji je prvi put opisao kako američku, oni bi iz Amerike, tako i evropsku trolešnju. I think most beekeepers would be able to see that when they look at the frame like this, you know, all these cells, there's a lot of cells that have been opened, it does look healthy, you can see the bees have been biting uh, the, the, the cells and, and removing, so uh, in this stage it's not difficult to find American farm food. Kad je ovakva klinička slika, nema dileme niti problema da se diagnostikuje američka trulež, znači tipični znaci. The tricky thing is to find it in a very, very early stage. Problem je da se nađe dok ne pokaže takve klinički znake, odnosno u ranom stadiju. As for example in this stage here. Naprimer, u ovakvoj situaciji. You see these cells have been opened a little and something and if you then look at this cell here yeah. and this oh it's just because some bees are uh, uh, growing out of the cell. Ali ovo kad je rani stupanj vi možete da previdite znake bolesti da ove male rupice na pojedinim poklopčićima protumačite pa dobro to se neka pčela tu izleže nije nikakav znak za uzbunu. But look at this one. Ali ako pogledate ove ćelije sa nekim ostacima hitina... Yeah, you see, when you put it a matchstick in it and took it out, it's a rope in it, so here we have American frog in that cell, which not everyone would be able to identify directly. Nekada možete, nekada ne, da sa ovim testom u tom stadiju morano pomoću šibice utvrdite da li je tu. But if you find it, you can be sure that it's American farmer. But not to find it, you cannot say it's not American farmer. Ako nađete ovakvu sliku, znači razvučenu larvu u vidu lepljive trake boje čokolade, sigurno je tu američka trunež. Ali ako ne nađete, ne znači da nije. As the drawing showed that when, when the larvae uh, has disintegrated, it's, it dries out to a scale on the bottom of the cell, on the side of the cell, and it's these scales you are able to find, for example, within this green circle, as a typical scale in the, in the cell. That's what also is important to look for when the bee inspectors are, are inspecting colonies and frames. Zato morate da gledate da li ima ovih ostataka osušenog tela uginuli pčela, što ne zovu scales, jer to mora malo podrobnije inspektor da pogleda ako nema ovih klasičnih, lako vidljivih simptoma. So when the bee, when, if, if a beekeeper suspects that he or she has American farm root in the colony, it's uh, mandatory to call a bee inspector. Uvijek kad se posumnja, mora da se zove inspektor koji zna da pregleda pčela. The bee inspector goes out, inspect the colonies, and if he or she sees these symptoms here, they say, okay, the colony is with symptoms, and it has to be destroyed. Ako inspektor nađe simptome, on odmah kaže, društvo mora da se uništi. In some cases, the bee inspectors uses this uh, uh, equipment is from Vitas in a lateral flow device where you just put some, well, you first take, take some of the larvae into a small bottle with a liquid shake, put it here, and then you see this 
blue band here in uh, no. Inspektori nekada koriste i ovaj brzi test na terenu uz mularu za koju sumnjaju da je obolela i usitne i stave na ovu rupicu i vide preko ovih traka da li ima ili ne ima infekta. But if the bee inspector is not able to identify or sort of say that this is American fowl blue, they can take a sample of the comb, put it in the box like you see in the picture, and then send it to the laboratory. A kompet nisu sigurni, onda uzimaju deo sača, to znate i vi kako se uzima i pakuje i nosi u šalju laboratoriju. And at the laboratory, they will first, well, they'll do the same test with the matchsticks and, and this uh, Vita device, or they might uh, do microscopy of, of uh, for to see the spores and the uh, vegetative status of the bacteria, or they might even cultivate on these agar plates to see if there are uh, bacteria in, in, in the sample. Znači, u laboratoriji možete ili pod mikroskopom, što je manje prouzdano, a najbolje je zasijati na tačno određenoj podlozi u Petrišolji i pratiti šta će da iznikne. And as I said, all colonies with symptoms, they have to be killed and burned. Društva sa simptomima, jasni, moraju da se unište, odnosno spale. We are not allowed to use any antibiotics against the American frog group. We are not allowed to make shook swarms either, but they have to be killed. Znači, nemaju ništa drugo od opcija, ne smiju da koriste antibiotike i jedina opcija da ubiju društvo. And then the bee inspector has to inspect all colonies in an area of three kilometers radius around the affected apiary. Nakon što je inspektor utvrdio da negde ima američke truleži, dužan je da u radiusu od tri kilometra sve ostale košnice preglede. What we then recommend to the beekeepers is to clean the equipment very thoroughly so that there are not spores left in the equipment. And it's very, very important that, that, uh, that this cleaning is done correctly. First you scrape all the wax and the propolis and so on from the, from the boxes, either wooden boxes or, or, or glass boxes. And then you can either, uh, with, with the... Plamenic fire, sabatro, plamenic. Yeah, yeah. Brenner. <laughs> yeah, well, you can, you can use the blow torch yeah. on the wooden boxes, yeah. Yeah. but not on the plastic boxes. No, no, no. We have no plastic boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, at the, at the final, we have some, I don't know, if, uh, it's, it's called a sort of a disinfectant a agent oh, no. called Viacone S. You can spray it on the, on the equipment afterwards. It's very important that this tree stays. You don't need the dog. Yes. This is the dog of Ingemar Fries. He was very fond of his dog. Znači, nakon spaljivanja društva, košnice koje su ostale moraju mnogo dobro da se očiste, prvo fizički, mehanički, da se oguli ceo sloj, a onda da se još brenerom dobro opali, znači visokom temperaturom. What we recommend the beekeepers to do when they have had an outbreak of American firewood in an apiary is to transfer all the rest of the colonies onto clean equipment on just coke foundation and then melt down all the old equipment, all the old combs and, and winter the colonies on comb foundation. That's what we recommend to be. Sače mora da se isto svo odlišti i novo sače da se stavi. So, new combs, new... Yeah, we take a new, not a new box, but a box that is clean, completely clean, put new frames, just comb foundation, put the box, and then shake the bees onto there. Samo satne osnove, ništa od starog sača da se koristi. Znači, kad se košnice očiste, 
i Brennerom srede, onda se stavljaju ramovi sa samo satnim ostalima, ništa od starog sađa. Pa da, ali ramovi cijelo, da, eto, vaše tako. There was a survey done that before I started working in Sweden, they did a survey where they divided some acres where they did only kill the colonies that were deceased and they didn't do anything with the rest. No. That's in one study. Because we are not supposed uh, the, the, the legislation in Sweden doesn't say anything about what to do with the colonies that are not symptoms. But we, so we tested it all, they tested it. So one group of apiaries, the colonies were killed and nothing else. And another group was the colonies that were deceased were killed and the rest of the colonies were transferred to clean boxes on comb foundation. And all the old comb was uh, melted down. Niko zakonodavstvo ne propisuje šta da se radi sa društvima koje nemaju kliničke znake, a verovatno imaju uzročnika. Tako da su tu sad varijante na temu šta raditi sa svim ovim, sa opremom. I imali su eksperimente da ostave sve, samo spale društva, ostave koštice pa nasele nove pčele i tako da vide šta će da se desi. And here you see the result. This is the group of apiaries where the only thing that was done was uh, destroying the colonies that were deceased. And the other one is the, uh, the, the group of uh, apiaries where they did this very thorough work. And these are the colonies that were not, that didn't have any symptoms, but spores were present in the colonies. And as you see here, here the reduction of colonies with spores went from around 30% till 13%. And the other one, the reduction went from just below 60% till only 3%. And it's a very difficult graph because you would have liked the, the, the red bars to be at the same height from the beginning. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is the diff distance from here to here and the distance from here to here. That's what matters. The right points. This is the proportion of hives with spores. And the proportion of hives with spores in one group was from the beginning 39% and the year after 13%. So reduction was like this. And the other group, the reduction was much higher. It could be presented in a different way, but it's... Yes. In here, none of the equipment was cleaned. In the other one, everything was cleaned. To je nelogično. Znači, u ovom prv levo, levo pokazuje šta se desilo sa društvima u kojima ništa nije očišćeno. U ovim desnima ništa nije očišćeno, a mnogo je manja bila reinfekcija, a u levima su sve očistili i bilo je lošije. Bitno da... The point is that it is not logic result. Yes, it is a logic. Nobody expected such results. Why not?
Mm. It's very good results. But it, yeah, it is good results. But you you didn't expect it. We'll skip it. I can say we. I, I can say like this. It is very important if, to clean. <laughs> to clean. If you want, if a beekeeper wants to prevent new outbreaks year after year, it's important that you you clean the equipment. You use new foundation, and of course, also think about what kind of bees you have. skip this one. I don't know about in Serbia, but in Sweden, and I see even in some other places, that there's a misconception saying that American farm food spores are present everywhere in all colonies. But that's not the case. Not at all, actually. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, I do, no, no, me. I can. Uh, what, what, what I say is that in Sweden, among beekeepers, not among every beekeeper, but there is a tendency among beekeepers in Sweden saying that American farmwood stores are present everywhere. Do do, be, do beekeepers say that here in Serbia too? Da li mi mislimo ovdje da svako društvo ima manje ili više spora američke truleži, ali ne pokazuje znake? Mislimo, ali to nije tačno. I oni isto misle u Švedskoj, ali to nije tačno. Oni isto? Ok, sorry about that. I thought that, I, I, I thought you didn't, because then you would have been much wiser than Swedish speaking. Because, because it's not present in every country, not at all. Nije. And as you see here, it's, it's actually interesting. It's many years ago that yeah, I think it was actually more, more or less developed by a Danish uh, beekeeper or a researcher that you could cultivate honey and find spores of American farm root from cultivating honey. Okay. And it's been done in many places to see is there a risk in this colony for an outbreak or not. Radili su analizu meda, da bi videli da li može da se desi da izbija pole. Znači, med iz koštice zaseju od atlas spore i na osnovu toga vide da li procedne, da li će se desiti slučajno izbijanje bolesti. But a very strange and surprising result from this survey here, this study here, that even in colonies with symptoms, there was 11% of the samples from honey where they didn't find spores. Dešavalo se da čak i iz društava koje su imala simptome američke truleži, med nije imao spore. Tako da ta metoda preko meda nije poznana. Which is quite strange. Malo je to čudno, ali... Another thing is also, if you see on the other side, without spores, we had a number of colonies without spores in this study, that 39% of them had spores in the honey. A vrlo čudno da mnoga društva, da iz mnogih društava koja nisu imala spore, med je u 39% da te imao spore. So what you can say, American farm food spores are not present in all colonies, but are present in more colonies that get the disease, or where you see the disease. <laughs> to ask you to repeat. American farm food spores are not present in all colonies. Znači, nisu prisutne spore u svakom društvu. But it's present in more colonies than ever get diseased. Ali su prisutno mnogo više društava nego što zaista oboli. Because the fact that there are spores in the colony okay, okay. does not necessarily mean that the colony is diseased. In connection with, with this study, uh, they started uh, at the Swedish University of Agriculture to test would, would it be better to take bee samples uh, and, and cultivate the bee samples 
to, uh, to, uh, so, uh, to get an idea, do we have the spores in the colony or not? Aye. Aye. As a prediction. Da, da li možda bolje uzimati pčele kao uzorke iz društva da bi procenili da li ima spore? Znači ne leglo, nego pčele. So, from the same colonies, they took honey samples and bee samples at the same time. Okay, i med i pčele su uzimali. And as you see, in the honey, 7% of the honey, of, uh, of the colonies, they found spores. U 7% samo uzoraka meda su nađene spore. But in 19% they found in the adult bees. Ali u 19% pčela su nađene spore. So the adult bees, bee cells are much, okay. much better to predict whether you have spores in the colony and then potentially can get the disease. Znači mnogo je relevantnije uzeti pčele nego med za procenu prisustva spora u društvu. So what is now going to be implemented in Sweden in the future? We are, I, I've been working quite hard. Uh, I'm helping the Swedish Board of Agriculture on, on new legislation. So we're trying to implement a sort of a new system. Here you have a colony with an outbreak in the red uh, square here, and as I said earlier, every colony around three kilometer has to be inspected. In some parts of Sweden it's a lot of colonies, maybe not as many as here, but it's quite a lot of work to do the inspections. As I said before, every city must have its own inspector for the trees, and it's a lot of work that the inspector does the analysis of every tree. So in the future, we're going to do like this, the bee inspector goes out to every apiary, takes bee samples, put the bee samples and okay. send them to the laboratory. And when they cultivate the sample at the laboratory and find zero spores, Ako se nađu u tom zbirnom uzorku spore, like in the green squares, there's no there's no reason to go out and do the visual inspection because you're not you won't find any symptoms. Tamo te ne nađete ništa iz tih uzoraka, onda nećete košnice iz kojih su uzorci nemate potrebe da da analizirate. So the bee, bee inspectors can concentrate on the co on the apiaries where they found spores. Samo za one pčelinjake za koje su videli da je u pčelama bilo spora idu i analiziraju te pčelinjake. That doesn't necessarily mean that they find clinical symptoms, but what the beekeeper also get from information is that okay, there are spores in my apiary. I have to be more careful. Yeah. To ne znači da će da spale društvo ako nađu spore, a nema klinički znaka, ali je jako dobro da budu oprezniji kad znaju da imaju spore. And so at the same time you also, which, which we have recommended for quite many years for the Swedish beekeepers, is to set up barrier systems. And a barrier system is a system where you don't move equipment from one, for example, colony to another, or from one apiary to another, or from one section of apiaries to another section. So if you get an outbreak of a disease in one apiary, you have to spread it by whatever to, to another. System barrieras, znači kojim sprečava da odnosno oni su sami rešili da tim sistemom spreče da sa jednog na drugi pčelinje prenose preko opreme. And what we also recommend the bee keepers is actually a little like what Norman talked about, test for hygienic behavior. Takođe rade analizu na and a number of the beekeepers, so the queen breeders in Sweden, actually do test the, the, the material for, for hygienic behavior. This is done with this needle. 
what can that be done with uh, liquid nitrogen? This is from America. Znači, može i iglicom, kao što smo mi radili, pink yield ili sa tečnim azotom, kao što je malo pre gospodin Norman objašnjavao. So here are the incidences of American found root found in Sweden from 1974 until uh, 2016. It's a proportion of apiaries where American found root was found. Procena društava u kojima je nađena američka trulež počeo od 74. pa do 2016. A procenti su vrlo mali, kao što vidite, do 4, samo jedan put preko 5%. And you see for the past many, many years back here, the proportion of apiaries in relation to the number of apiaries that we estimate uh, present in Sweden is around, uh, is between one a half percent to one percent. Manio jedno procenta, but uh, are they with or without symptoms? Symptoms. Aha, to su baš sa simptomima, sa procenta baš društava sa bolešću. Yeah. Why is it different from uh, from 74 and then here? Because in 1974 there was a new law saying in Sweden that when you find symptoms in a colony, it has to be destroyed. Zašto baš od 74. ovako smanjenje procenta obolili društava zato što je baš ta donesen zakon da mora da se uništi društvo u kome ima kliničke slike. Before 74, they could make ships small. They, they could, oh, sorry, I can explain. So what they could do if they find, found a, a colony with uh, symptoms, they could just shake the bees onto uh, new frames. Imali su pre 74. mogućnost da ne spale društvo, nego da stresu odrasle pčele u novu čistu košnicu. But, well, this indicates at least that to eradicate the colonies with symptoms is better than the Sioux war method. And I, I see, we've seen that in other countries too. New Zealand, for example, Switzerland, I don't know about the UK, but, but I know it's, it's certainly a much better way to get rid of it. That way. Isto se ta metoda uništavanja pokazala definitivno mnogo korisniju nego prethodno korišćeno pravljenje, odnosno prebacivanje u vidu roja. I have promised to stop at 7, uh, 5.30, so I've... Uh, but I, so I'll just make it very quick when it's talk about Nosema. You probably know about Nosema, it's uh, uh, in microsporidia. Uh, you can jump, jump here. <coughs> and what happens with this, my meat you can put here, when it gets, when it infects the epithelial cells here in the ventriculus, and what happens to the bee is that, you can go here, the bees that get this infection would get a reduced uh, longevity. It wouldn't live as long. And the hyperpharyngeal glands, where the bees produce food for the brood, is uh, disintegrating. The bees get shorter lived, it's faster, uh, getting old faster. Queens that might be infected, they would uh, get superseded. So a number of the queens that died during the winter could be due to Nosema. And also it can happen that the bees get dysenteria inside the colony during the winter. Excuse me. About Nosema or Okay. Good. Nosema apis was described by Sander in 1909, and then Nosema serrana was actually described in 96 by Ingemar Fries and, and his colleagues. It was found on Apis serrana in China, and at that time they thought Nosema serrana is on Apis serrana, Nosema apis is on Apis mellifera. But in 2005 it was found first in Taiwan, 
on Apis mellifera, and already, I think already also in 2005, it was found in Spain, Lucina Serrana. In Europe, first time, yes. To smo pričali još 2008. when I came back from Ingemar's lab here, but he obviously didn't, uh, didn't hear. No. Uh, the thing is that we have done, maybe, maybe there is a tendency in Europe that Nosima Sirana is much more prevalent in southern parts of Europe. Whereas in the northern parts we have very little Lucina Serrana. Uh, osim onog opisa o kome ste već ovdje više puta slušali, znači na Zeman Serrana kod nas je od uvijek u stvari i bila, ali jednostavno ako pitate za Švedsku, tamo je češće na Zeman Apis, jer generalno se pokazalo da u hladnim regionima na Zeman Apis i dalje potpuno predominantno. And one reason could be the fact that if you have a bee like this, with the infection, you can take the bee, put it in the freezer, you can take it out after half a year or two yeah. years, you can cross the bee and extract and put this, the spores from that bee into a sugar solution and feed that to other bees and they will get diseased. That's with apis, nosema apis. It remains viability. But it does. But but when it's the Sima Serrana, the, the spores from the Sima Serrana they die in the freezer. What time? I'm not quite sure. And I can tell you, in Sweden, it's very cold in the winter, and all the beekeepers who keep their equipment in the cold storage, it could be a reason for we have less the Sima Serrana because. Yeah. The spores are killed by ne, freezing in the winter. Ne trpi hladno, da, da. Pa postoje, rađene su istraživanja, pa različita vremena i različita temperatura zavrzavanja, ko će da pamti svaki dan. <laughs> ali, ali, uh, those symptoms... Uh... Well, I, well, I know what they say in Spain, and I know it's been discussed a lot, but what they say in Spain is that you don't see the clear symptoms with the Zima Serrana infections, as you see but with the But in Serbia, there are quite similar, almost the same symptoms yeah. that are usually uh, described for the Zima Apis. So. One thing I would like to point out is that when, when, when Swedish beekeepers call me and they say, well, I have no Zima, okay, how do I know? They tell me that the bees have been, you know, shitting all over the place in the colony. And I say this is the Sima, but it's not. This is dysenteria. This is dysenteria. Okay, but but not caused by the Sima. Could have been caused by the Sima, but not necessarily. No, dysenteria može, ali ne mora obavezu da bude izazvana na Sima. It's a misconception that this is the same as as the Sima. We did actually. We took samples from 60 colonies with dysentery and uh, analyzed the bees for Nusima. And as you see here, almost 70% of those samples we didn't find any Nusima, although the bees have seen it all over the place. Od 60 društava sa dysenterijom, skoro 70% je bilo vezno zemlje. So, but if there is the sema in a colony with this interior, then you have trouble, of course, because then you have all the, 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 the contagious, no. the spores. But yes, it, it, it's just to, uh, important to know the difference. The sema can trigger this interior, and if it does, then it really worsens the situation. But dysenteria can be caused by other things also. Znači, dysenteria može, ali vrlo često, čak u 70% nije izazvana na zemom, ali ako je izazvana na zemom, odnosno ako utvrdite i prisustvo na zemi dysenterije, problem je još gori, zato što će spore da se tim fecesom šire još mnogo, mnogo brže i više 
pa će još veći problem biti, nego ako je izazvo na nečem drugom. What we see at the colony level, where the colony has uh, the SEMA infection, is that we see uh, generally reduced winter survival of the colony, uh, lowered brood rear capacity, uh, especially as poor spring build up. Colonies in the spring don't develop very well, and we also see a reduced honey yield from colonies with the SEMA infection. Znači, Posledice prisustvano zeme su smanjen opstanak preko zime, stepen, znači, step, na, smanjen na brojnost preživljavanja. Uh, let me just... Yes. Uh, smanjen kapacitet odgoja legla, vrlo slab prolećni napredak i, naravno, smanjeni prinos. Med. Uh... Sometimes you can say Nosema is quite uh, an important disease because you can't see it directly. There's no sort of clear symptoms. But as you see here, it can, it, it can reduce the honey yields uh, and, and uh, increase uh, the winter mortality. There are symptoms Smatra se, ne zna se da li je toliko opasno, obzirom da može i ne mora da izazove, ali, ali definitivno e, opšte stanje slabi i, proces, i o, prinos meda se smanje. So what we recommend the beekeepers in Sweden to prevent uh, a SEMA, there's no uh, medicine against it, we don't have any medicine, so it's, it's a question of prevention. Winter the bees on wax foundation, if, if you have problems with the disease, shake the bees and wax foundation, or at least very, very clean cold. Znači, nema preparata, nema leka. Ono što oni savjetuju na njihovim pčelarima je da stresu adulte pčele na novu saće, na satne osnove čiste. Uh, we recommend the beekeepers not to winter the colonies on, uh, what do you call, honey from honeydew, or honey from heather honey because it contains quite a lot of uh, substances that the bees cannot digest and it triggers that they might uh, sort of, uh, how can I say, defecate inside the colony during the winter. Da, savjetu ih da nikad ne zazime pčele na medu od vresa, na medljici i uopšte sa bilo čim što možda im izazove digestivne probleme i da ostave fece su košnici. We recommend to decontaminate uh, the stored wax with acetic acid. I'll show you a, a picture on the next slide. And we also uh, say try to avoid too early brood rearing. Because the thing is that when the temperature in the colony rises, the, of course the temperature in the bees also rises. And that's when the nosema parasite is starting really to proliferate. Takođe ih savjetuju da odrade dekontaminaciju u skladištenog voska sa sirćetnom kiselinom, a da izbegavaju uh, rano leglo, pojavu ranog legla. And here the way to decontaminate with acetic acid. What we recommend the beekeepers is only use the wax that is clean, not, not a lot of the wax that has been ruined. Put it in boxes and, and here on the top this is an empty box. And then you can put a bowl, acetic acid, some paper or some cloth. Be, be, be sure to make it tighten and just, just let it sit there. When the acetic acid evaporates, it'll kill the spores in uh, the cone. Znači, način na koji tretiraju uh, prazno sače, sače koje u skladištenu tokom zime, pomoću sirćetne kiseline. And as I said, we also recommend the beekeepers to shake the colonies on wax foundation. And does that really work? Well, Ingemar Fries, he did his PhD uh, thesis actually on Nosema many, many years ago. And he did a five year study where he, he uh, he had three groups of colonies, I'll show you the next picture, and tested whether this shaking on to coal foundation would work 
and how would it would work. Ingimar Fris je pokojni, nažalost, upravo još do doktora tradio procenu efikasnosti tog stresanja čela odrastnih na nove satne osnove da vidi da li to može da spreči da se ponovo javi do zemlje. So here are the three groups that were tested. One group, the bees were wintered on comb foundation only. The next group, the brood chamber combs were changed with virgin wax in the spring, and virgin wax is wax that has been only sitting in the super, in the honey super. And the third group was no wax renewal. The colonies had to sit on the same wax for five years. Znači imaju tri grupe društava, jednu grupu društava je zazimio samo na satnim osnovama, drugu grupu je zazimio na saću koje je zamenjeno sa novim devičanskim saćem, ali tek u proleće, a u trećoj grupi nije radio ništa, jednostavno pet godina isto saće bilo u svim košnicama. I onda uzorke uzimao iz svih tih društava i u proleće u jesen analizirao na nozemu, merio površine sa legom u proleće i merio prinos meda. And here are the results. As you see here, old comb, you know, no chains of comb. Control, which was the one where they got the virgin back in the spring. And the last one foundation, as you see, this is a of colonies where you found spores in the fall, that's the blue one, and the red one is a proportion of colonies with spores in the spring. And as you see, if it's old wax, it actually increased. So there were a higher number of colonies in the spring with spores than before, than before. and the opposite for the core foundation. Uh, najviše je bilo spora u proleće u onim društvima koje su ostavljene na onom vosku koje su već, koje su već imali u košnici, znači stari vozak, vosak, to sve kao izvor kontaminacije sporama, a no, najbolja situacija je bila u ovom trećem slučaju gde su na čistim satnim osnovama zazimljene pčele, u proleće je bilo znatno manje spora. So, the conclusion of this also is that wintering and comb foundation reduces the incidence of nozema. Znači, šta smanjuje pojav nozeme kao bolesti, ne samo pojav spora, nego bolest nozemu, može da spreči ili pakar smanji zazimljavanje društva na satnim osnovama. However, you cannot say that it's a direct link between nosema and wax renewal, but the nosema level in the spring is important for the honey production. If it's a high nosema level, you get lower production. Sve to ima vezi sa prinosom meda, što je manje nozeme, to će biti bolji prinos meda. And we know also that there's probably other, other advantages with the with wintering on, on new foundation on other diseases, American fowl brood, chalk brood, uh, probably at least those two has Zazivljavanjem uh, na satnim osnovama sprečavamo i mnogi druge bolesti, američku trulež, grečno leglo, znači ne samo na zemlji. Just a little about some uh, surveys that has been done in Sweden. Uh, Sweden uh, had a referendum to whether to join the EU. In the referendum was in '94, and we thought, okay, if Sweden joins EU, then everyone can just bring in bees from other countries into Sweden. And what would happen? because so far we hadn't found uh, tracheomites. So there was a, a large survey on tracheomites in 93. Uh, there was a survey on Nozema in 2007, because we wanted to see, do we have Nozema Zerani? There was a tracheomite survey in 2000, uh, well, uh, this Nozema was also followed up in 2009 and 11. 2010 we had a national tracheomite survey again, and in 2012 to 13, 
14, we have uh, a so-called EPIRUV project. So we have had a number of surveys to see what kind of diseases do we have in Sweden. Stalno rade screening na državnom nivou, pogotovo su se uplašili pre ulaska u Evropsku uniju, da će se možda nešto desiti prije zbog otvaranja granica i slobodnog prelaska, pa su odradili screening pre ulaska u Evropsku uniju i redovno rade ne samo na nozemu, nego i na krpelja tropilelaps, sreća nemaju, da, izvinjam se, na karapisa, karapis vodi, trahjama krpelja. So this survey on the SEMA, in 2007, uh, we took 967 samples. Of those were 319 positive, so 33% of the uh, colonies had an OSEMA infection. 33% analyzed društava 14% of those that were infected were mixed at that time, so Nosema apis and Nosema serrana, and the rest were only Nosema apis. Ogromna procena su bile inficirane samo Nosema apis u Švedskoj, još 86%, a vrlo mali broj sa mešanom infekcijom, a ni jedan jedini uzorak samo sa Nosema serrana. And if you know about Swedish geography, you can see here the mixed infections. They are the most prevalent in the southern part of the country. Da, a te mešovite infekcije samo zemljom serana su bile u južnom delu zemlje. And when we see later on, actually, the results was from 2007. Here you have also from 9 and 11. And there's actually a tendency that the, the amount of the proportion of the DNA from Nusima Serrana is not increasing, but it's decreasing. Čak se smanjuje tokom vremena, od 2007. na ovamo, kao što vidite ove crvene bordosto biće, smanjuje se brojnost Nusima Serrana, odnosno DNK, pošto se diferencijacija radi DNK analizu. So what we can say is, we don't have any problems with the Zima Serrano in Sweden. Uh, 2016, uh, we made the so-called baselines. Uh, sorry, this was not, I'm, I'm a little ahead. This, this is a study from 2010. Apart from uh, analyzing uh, for a number of samples for tracheal mites, we didn't find any tracheal mites. We analyzed samples from 130 apiaries for other pathogens. Nakon analize na trahijama krpelja, i nisu naše nijedno, radili su analize 304 pčelinjaka na druge bolesti. We found Nosema in 18% of the samples. U 18% je svega bilo Nozeme. And American foul boot spores in 5% of the samples. American foul boot spores are all over the place. It's not true. We found it in 5%. Tako da ona priča da spora ima u skoro svim društvima nije tačna. Svega u pet društava su našli spore. Ne, da kažem, ne bolest, spore. 2016, we made a new study with 382 apiaries. That were analyzed for these pathogens here. 2016 su opet radili screening na sve ove bolesti. 382 pčelinjaka. Just jumped. And in that, only 6% of the samples we found American farmers. I opet jako malo, 6% pčelinjaka imalo američku trunaž. Spore, spore, ne bolesti, spore. So what we conclude is tracheomites is still not present in Sweden. European firewood is very, very rare. This is not a problem at all. American firewood is not a very big problem. And there's nothing showing that Lucima is, Lucima Serrana is replacing Lucima Avis. Šta su zaključili? Da nema ni dalje trachea krpelja. Da... Let me... Oh, sorry.
da evropska trulež nikakav problem isto ne pravi i da nema nikakvog dokaza da jednozemac se rade takva da zamenja jednozemu, a protero jednozemu APS nema nikakvi dokaza. So does this mean that we don't have any problems with our bees and bee health in Sweden? Koji su onda problemi odakle gubici pčela u Švedskoj? Of course we have problems also, and we have winter losses. Imaju probleme, imaju zimske gubitke, iako nemaju patogene. And just when you talk about Norman, you mentioned something about the colors, and you said also, I can show you figures from colors, but we have actually a quite unique situation in Sweden. We have data on winter losses from 1920. Malo pa smo pričali o kolosu i o praćenju projedu gubitaka pčela, ali oni u Švedskoj imaju od mnogo, mnogo ranije, vidite, od koje godine oni prate gubitke pčela? Od 1920. So this is 1920, and this is 2016, and you see, it's going up and down quite a bit. Da, 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 vidite kako imaju fluktuacije, ponekad prosto neka godina, s vremena na vreme, ajde da kažemo svaki pet godina, So we cannot say winter losses is a completely new phenomenon. We've had them at all times. No. And if you take the whole 93 year period, the average is 13%. So take nekih... 96 godina prosek je gubitaka zimskih 13%. But, although we have already always have had winter losses, we can see from the statistics that the losses have increased. Here I put the winter losses for 10 year periods. Ako gledamo po 10 godina, za dekade, za decenije, ipak neki porast postoji poslednjoj deceniji. Odnosno sve prethodne decenije. So you see here the last 10 year period from 2007 to 2016 compared to all other 10 year periods that we have figures on is statistically higher. Statistički čak je gledano više i golim okom se vidi u poslednjoj deceniji. What is the cause? What is the cause? That's a good question. What is the cause? That's a really good question. Here's here are our figures from Sweden from the Colors survey that we've done since 2009, and it goes the lowest we actually have had during that period was 9.6 percent, and the highest was 24.7 percent, which was very high. Da, jedne godine baš bilo mnogo, 24,7 2009. na 10, a imali su i jako malo, 9,6 neki. One reason is actually very well. Da li je razum dobro? We have this lucky situation, as I told before in Sweden, that Vero is quite new, and we still have, when I started working in Sweden, 97, Varroa was just present in the, in the southernmost part of the country, very far down, not even where I live now. So we have had the possibility to compare winter losses in areas with Varroa and without Varroa for a number of years. Oni dan imaju delove bez Varroa, Varroa za njih relativno nova pojava i ovo su napravili poređivanje zimskih gubitaka društava koji nemaju varovu i gubitaka koji imaju varovu, jer oni još uvek imaju mnoge predele bez varove. As you see here, 2010, much higher winter losses in the areas with varova compared to the areas without. Konkretno 2010. godine vidite koliko je veći procenat gubitaka društava kad imaju varovu nego među društvima koje nemaju. And that's consistent, we've seen that all the time. And I think that's one very, very important reason. But there are other reasons too, of course. Uh, we cannot exclude pesticides. I think, uh, as we heard this morning from Konabi, 
the neonicotinoids and other pesticides. We cannot exclude that the situation for pollen and nectar is not as good today as it was when you yeah. get 50 years back in the field. But sometimes we also have beekeepers who are not giving their colonies enough food for the winter. Ne možete isključiti one druge faktore zato što ni pole ni nektar nisu kao ranije ni drugi faktori nisu isti kao što je bilo pre 50 godina a jedan od faktora je i zimska iskrana hrana na koji se ostave pčeli zim. I don't know about here but I saw a picture on on the magazine that you also have winter here, of course, and the bees in the snow. We have quite long winters in Sweden, and we really need to feed the colonies a lot of feed to make the colonies survive. And when we test, when we when we look at the study or the data and ask the beekeepers, how much sugar did you give them before winter? And how high were your winter losses? We see the beekeepers who gave a lower amount of sugar, they had much higher winter losses. Who gave uh, a lower amount? A lot, well, no. Uh, if you see this one here, I make a break, break point. If, if I ask the beekeeper, how many kilos of sugar did you give your colonies before winter? And if it was less than 15 kilos of sugar, dry matter, those beekeepers had much higher losses. When it comes to the they have a lot of time to feed the bees, to live, and when they did this study, the bees that were koji su davali manje od 15 kg šećera pre zime, imali su znatno veće gubitke od onih koji su davali više od 15 kg šećera. So what I say to the beekeepers, of course we can we can work like our organizations can work to get better environment for the bees, like better pastures, nectar, honey, reduced amount of pesticides and so on. But I myself personally, when I stand behind my, my colony, it doesn't really matter. What I can do is what I do with my colony. So if I want to make the colony, or the chances that the colony survive, I treat control varroa good, strong colonies, healthy winter bees, and enough feed. That's a really important point. Uh, for the winter, we recommend either sugar solution or inverted sugar. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 he did it right after he, he, when 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 you take the honey in in uh, August and and then you feed feed. Sometimes it's necessary to feed to get enough strength. 
but then by the end of uh, August, just shake all the bees on the on the foundation. Yes, I, I can show uh, I can show you from. Just hang on a sec. For example, in Norway, it's been very very common to do this. Uh, Half of all the honey production in Norway is heather honey. Yes. So the beekeepers, they put thousands and thousands of colonies on the heather in, 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 from sometimes in August and until uh, 15th or 20th of September. As you see here. And it's extremely well organized in Norway. So they, you have these huge areas, and you see here. It's a sign. This sign shows. This is your area, and and you you can you have to actually also, as you see here, when you put your colonies. You also have to put a paper that this is my, no, I, I put my bees here. So when they get the colonies back from the heather, it's in 15th of this September, there's no brood left in the colony. There's only honey and no brood. Then it's very easy to shake the bees and call foundation. And you probably would think, hmm, in the middle of September to shake the bees and call foundation and give them winter feed. Does that work? Yes, it does actually. Uh, there was a Norwegian researcher who did this already back in the 60s, and the last feed they gave them was in early October. You need to give them a more feed, but it works. Uh, uh, how fast they, they, they build, build up the chunks? How speed they build up the combs? They build up the combs no problem. If you give them enough feed, if you give them enough feed, no, no, no. Sad, 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 se, da, on tad stavi o, i prihranjuje. Oni istovremeno grade sadne osnove i lageruju zalih. Uh, the combs? Uh, yes. In same time. In same time. Build up. Yes, you can, you can, you can, yes, they do. You can put a comb foundation in the colony and you give them the. They build out the comb and they store the honey. No, no, the honey. The winter feed. No, the no, the no, the uh, idea about pollen. It's really important for the bees to collect pollen for the winter bees and at the time when you get into September the winter bees have already been born. They have been fed up with pollen, fed up with pollen and they've been eating pollen. So what they need before winter is carbohydrates to survive. And in the spring, of course, in the spring, if there's no natural sources of pollen, then it can be necessary to give them pollen. But it's, I think it's really much more important that they get the pollen sunny when they uh, build on the winter bees in the car. No, no, no. Yes.
Gospodine, 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 prihranjuje ih oni istovremeno grade, staće i lagere. Tako, poriče. On to tvrdi. Stavi sat na osnovu, sipate i sivu. One grade sat na osnovu i lagere. Ali mora u sat na osnovu onda u radi neđu ulje to staviti. Ne, tad ih stavi. U septembru? U septembru. Teško im može, teško im može uraditi hran. On je za 15. septembra metra, sad će prije toga da mi ima. Ne može izraditi sat na osnovu i... To je nelogično. Ovo nema veru. Izgrade ga, dok se sipa one izgrade iz ime na saću, ali ga tad grade. You're not the only one who doesn't believe it. Ne. Dobro je ovo. It's too late. For my belief is too late to build up the cones on October. Well, in October, yeah, but but if you under under Scandinavian conditions in Sweden and in Norway, it is possible actually if if you shake the bees on corn foundation and give them enough food uh, in the middle of September, if you have strong colonies, you need healthy, strong bees, then they can do it. Uh, this is the way I feed my colony. Or we feed our colonies. We have this wooden thing here. You can see there's an opening here. You put a plastic box, or a plastic bag. Just put the sugar syrup side up there and some uh, straw. The bees don't drown. So the bees go up here, take the sugar syrup and go down. And uh, you can have these feeder boxes, of course. But what we have, we have experienced is that the the, how can I say, the distance between the bees and this plastic bag is very little and there's no insulation. If you have this styrofoam uh, feeder box, it's insulated so the heat from the bees doesn't go up to the feet. But here, if you put reasonably warm uh, sugar solution and you have the heat from the bees, they take it very, very quickly. You can put 10 liters of feet in there the day after it's gone. <laughs> How much? 10, Ten liters, liters the day after it's gone. Like you want the... Yes. If, there's, if they're gone, it is... How many times? That's enough. Is that no, we give, we, give, we, give, we give two buckets of this and we can feed them in less than a week. Excuse me, uh, in, in one portion, how much uh, feed you, you get? Ne, ne, kolika porcija u jednom hranju? It depends. When, if, if, the, if the nectar flow is, has stopped and I have taken the honey already by the end of July, I give them small portions to keep them breathing. If, if, the strong, if the colony is strong enough and, you know, they don't need to breed anymore, I give them a lot of feed at the same time. Also because for me it's a advantage to get when they have done the breeding they need, it's an advantage to get uh, the colony to shut down uh, breeding so I can t treat with oxalic acid. Can I explain? It's difficult to explain. Yeah. Namjerno da bi stavljao oksalnu kiselinu ranije, to se razumije. What time you put oksalke? In November. November? Sometimes in December. It's cold in Sweden, I suppose it's cold in that time. 
Poland. Is, uh, it's November is Poland. Poland. Oh, it's Poland, yes. Okay. I don't know, I don't have time to show a lot more, but there was a little, I can show you the way we do our beekeeping. Uh, this is my wife here. We, we winter on one box here. Yeah. And the frame size is like this height here. LL. Uh, LL, it's a Swedish measure. We have 10 different frame sizes in Sweden, but it's like this. And the next box we put on our colony here is with virgin wax. You know, wax that has only been hot. Then when it's time to put on the honey supers, we switch the brew box. So the new one here gets down on this, and the old one here, and then you have the green skin. And these are the honey supers. And so when we come to the next time we put the honey supers, the new supers underneath, and okay, yeah, that's a lot of work. But the reason is we know that they will sort of put the feed or the honey in the boxes that are not already full with honey. And anyway, we are going down to the brood room to remove drone brood. So, uh, three weeks before we take the last honey, we put the queen in the bottom box here, the queen is excluded, and this is old wax that the bees sat on last year and this winter. And then when that old comb wax, get, uh, blue wax gets home, it's melted down. Melted down, right? Yeah, so we sort of continually ch change the wax. Every year, I understand. Every year, Every change year. Wax. yes. yes. It's a lot of work, but it works. Excuse me. When we do the when we do the inspections, if we don't want to check for for anything, we just lift the boxes and look here. And it's okay. The honey yield. Uh, last year we had about 40 kilo. Uh, per, per colony, which was quite low. Normally, we're around 60 kilos per colony. And we use the bee blower. No, oh, this is not a bee blower. Here's a bee. <laughs> she is a bee blower. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, here we have this uh, electric bee blower. Uh, we have a transformer. We have a battery and a transformer, and just blow up the bees like this. It really works nicely. This is a coffin. It's dual. You probably know this one here, yeah. I guess. It's a cast iron metal. It's dual. 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 Beekeeper in Finland, he has, or he has his wife got uh, about 1,500, almost 2,000 colonies. And when they feed the colonies, they have a big, big tank on the truck, and it's just like, like when you go to the petrol station. <laughs> it really works well. Zatěli sílu po rezervuáru i sílu pak a ukránili si ty rezervuáře. To je to největší čerovou. Přesně. Přesně. To je to. And when you went out, or was sometimes you can't find the colonies. I guess it's the same here sometimes. 
Here's my wife, she's, she's trying to dig out the colonies. So, so uh, in Norway, for example, there are a number of beekeepers who winter the colonies inside. Here's one. So every, every uh, uh, fall, where the, where the bees have got enough food, he brings the colonies into this basement and they sit there until spring. They do the cleaning flight sometimes. The inside, even if inside. I, I work with bees in Canada and we brought the colonies in to the storage buildings in September and we took them out in April. And that worked. So many months. But if you go into the if you go into this big big halls, uh, you cannot turn on the light, but you have a, a headlight with red lights. <laughs> you see the bees on the floor because they fly out the, on the boxes and, and fly. Out. But not for cleansing flight. The cleansing flight, they can sit if, if they're good, strong, healthy colonists. They can sit half a year without going out on the cleansing flight. No, they, they don't go out for that. No, no. Out, no, out of that building? No. They go out of the colonies. Oh, you can you can actually see it here on the floor. Maybe not. All these uh, black spots are dead bees, so the entrances are open. So if and it's 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 completely natural for bees during the winter to fly out and die outside the colonies. If it's not bloody freezing, so they cannot fly. But if it's just because at this temperature they are actually able to fly out of the colony. And it's completely natural for a bee to fly out and it die outside. But it doesn't fly outside. About uh, somewhere between 2 and 4 degrees. About 5 degrees it's getting a little problematic. Two to four degrees is uh, idealistic. I da na temperaturu u podrumu da bi prezimio. Ne sme preko toga da bude. Let's see, I'll just show you. Uh -huh. Sorry. Ah, oh, here you go. This is a guy who has uh, this truck here with his boom. So when he goes out and work the collar, we, we do it manually, we lift the block boxes during the summer and it's heavy for the backs, I know, I think you know about that. And he has developed this thing so he can, he can lift a lot of boxes and just move them aside and then he can work the bees here in the, in the, in the room channel. It saves the bank. Uh, I can show you in Sweden. Let's send up to our producer. I can show you the B races. The most common bee race in Sweden, bee race and bee race, is Bockfest actually. But then you can also argue what is Bockfest? Bockfest is many different things, but, but yeah, that's, that we know. But then we have Ligustica, 
Mechanica, Mellifera, Mellifera, Hybrids and Dolo. But actually this is, oh, it should have been the, the year, it's quite many years ago I did this one. If you look at it today, the proportion of the Mellifera, Mellifera is higher. Uh, Mellifera, Mellifera, the black bee is getting more uh, popular in Sweden. If you look at Sweden here, these, all these places are isolated mating stations for the different races of bees. And if you look at it, Buckfast is mostly in this part of Sweden, and the further north you get is Karnica and Mellifera. Mellifera. Which one? Should I? What can I say? Well, it's difficult to say anything. Big Buckfast Bee is basically a combination. I sort of, I don't know what Norman would say about this, but I think, you know, Buckfast Bee is so many different things. And what has been done is that you've taken different races or lines and, and, and you just cross them with each other. And sometimes you get a very good result and sometimes it's really bad. I've had killer bees, really killer bees in Bonfest and sometimes they're good. It's a mix. It's a cross. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I could keep, but I think we have to stop here. Sorry about that. Thank you. I don't think there's anything else. Any questions? You're tired too, I guess. I think we should give a warm applause to our Thank you, Mr. Christiansen. Hvala vama svima na svim ovim predavanjima. Hvala vama na posjeti i vidimo se sutra od 9 do 16.00. Hvala vam.